All right, so today what we've got is some used pistons. As you can see, here's uh, the part number 6689C and uh, 6541M81. Well, I looked these up. That's just grease. That's all that is. All right. Um, the first number, I didn't pull anything up. The second number that actually I found this information, it's a, a Wiseco Pro True Piston. Uh, it's either 86 to 1 or 83 to 1, which I'm I'm assuming that top number is probably what's going to tell me what the difference is here. Um, they are 81 millimeter bore, so it's probably B16 or uh, LS or GSR. All right, and they retail 163.54 a piece, uh, or 585 to I think a 535. I might even seen a four or something, but I don't think it was the same piston as these. Um, but all right, and that's what I'm saying. You know, if you went to buy these brand new, you're going to pay somewhere near this number. You know, at least, uh, I would say, you know, give or take a little bit. All right, well, I traded on these. As you can see, no big deal here. Uh, it's just dirty. You can tell it's worn a little. Um, it's got just, a, I guess, the standard uh, wrist pin size that comes with the aftermarket pistons if you wanted to upgrade them at this point you could um okay so what they had was some kind of debris obviously was inside that cylinder well when i take these to machinist um you know I, i've done a trade where there were several things on the trade um and i ran these by my machinist and he thought pretty confident that he could clean them up he said you know the high spots here you know, make a might make a hot spot or whatever but you know at the same time you've got the thin sides here that will draw heat just like you know as much as any of this type of stuff would but you know when you balance them you you can take your weight from you know cleaning up the surfaces of these um so you know you're gonna have these little divots here this thing when we get to the last one you'll see but um it's got some imperfections it, at the slightest i guess you would it's pretty bad uh, but my machinist seems to think that these things are salvageable um so what we're going to do is we're going to take them over to him and uh, let him work with them a little bit um you know so if this is the worst one so evidently they dropped a valve and it crunch 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 you know it, it's as the uh, rotating assemblies rotating it, it it's got debris in here and uh, what this appears to be to me is somebody either didn't run titanium retainers or the dual valve springs or or something or a decent uh, retainer lock. So what happens is when you get a high RPM in your engine, because you're you hear dual valve springs, titanium retainers, and clips, but you don't always know why. All right, the reason why is when you get a higher RPM, well your your valve springs, your factory stuff your heavier retainer and your single valve spring they they you know they in and out you know real fast and the higher the rate that the keepers are just dropped in the top of the retainer and so if that valve has has the chance to to let go to fall the only thing holding it's those two clips at the top so if it drops down this is a result of it this is a perfect example of um you know when you have uh, your locks your keepers let go this ultimately is the end result but like i said you know according to my machinist he seems to think um, as long as there's no cracks we'll clean everything out and a lot of this just where it's been sitting uh, and it's got the locks it's got the standard um i'm assuming the standard wrist pins that come with these aftermarket pistons and these actually if you'll look them up the the what were they the the pro true pistons they actually have um they'll have the black coating on the side uh so they either these were were run for a while to run that coating off or uh there was a um an issue from day one this, this cylinder was too tight or they they maybe had a mechanical issue you know they were unaware of at start you know the rings were gapped incorrectly or something uh but you do have this wear this is this is normal um the sides are okay well keep in mind too when you have your piston rings you see here you got your rings well that keeps your combustion above that 
and it keeps your oil and everything below that, you know. So it separates your combustion oil from the top, from your oil and everything from the bottom. All right, so as long as you got good rings and we knock down any high spots or make sure there's no burrs on the outside edge here to actually get into the cylinder well, which again, you'll have your rings that actually center that. Uh, so they shouldn't be touching the, you know, the exact side of the wall. So you knock down any high spots you have on the outside, any high spots on the top to keep from drawing heat. Um, and there shouldn't be any problem on the top of these pistons trying to run these as a, as a performance piston. So I'll take them to the machine shop. We'll clean them up. We'll balance everything. And once we have everything balanced, I mean, so let's say machine shop labors hundred bucks. Uh, let's say I got $50 trade value in them, which I don't know that I even have that. So I've got a set of what I say, $535 pistons. I got 150 bucks in them and balanced and ready to go. Even if I bought these <clears throat> brand new at this price, when I go to the machine shop and I'm doing a build, I'm going to have him balance them anyway. Um, so this will actually have a cylinder number on this. We'll mic all the cylinders. We'll, uh, we'll balance the rods to the pistons. And what you do is you get your closest combinations and you actually, you know, you mic your cylinders and you mic each piston. Um, and then, uh, you cut your rings to fit. Now you cut your rings to fit, fit each individual cylinder. You don't cut your rings and then they can universally go into each cylinder. You cut your rings according to the cylinder you plan on running those rings in. Because if there is any discrepancies from cylinder one to cylinder two, and you cut these rings, let's say it's 17 thousandths is the gap you need. Just throwing a number out there. Well, if you cut that to 17 thousandths in cylinder one, and then you end up using that piston with that ring in cylinder two, that gap may not be correct. Uh, you may cause yourself some issues, which I have seen that before. Um, people assume once they cut that ring, you know, down to whatever their number is, 17 thousandths or whatever, well, they assume that ring will go in each cylinder. It doesn't work that way. You cut that ring to match the cylinder you plan on using it in, and that that uh, ring stays in that respectful cylinder. Um, so it, it, it doesn't change location, uh, and so you need to make sure your um, rings are cut to fit each individual cylinder. Um, and then you, um, I guess you, you know, you, you keep everything, you balance everything and keep it together. You mark everything. So this will be cylinder one, you know, this cylinder two, ultimately when everything's balanced and the rings are uh, hooked onto the, the pistons, these will have their respective places that they will live. They, they will not go like I, if this has one on it, that's where it lives. It will live in cylinder one. It will not go in cylinder two through four. Um, that the reason is, you know, the, the ring gap was set up to run in that cylinder one. Um, so you don't want to change that stuff. Um, um, if you wanted to, now would be a good time to go ahead and change the wrist pin. The wrist pins just have a little keeper on them and you can actually, um, call Wiseco or if, you know, if you're like me and you set up a wholesale account to where, you know, I set up wholesale accounts to where if I want something, uh, I, I buy it, you know, wholesale and distributor price if I can. It's easier to pay $15 for a business license and, and, and sales and use tax. And, you know, a couple of your buddies go in and split the shipping and that type of stuff. Uh, but you can call uh, some of these places and give them these part numbers. Uh, so the, the, the compression ratio, we still got to find that out. It's either 8.3 or 8.6 to 1. Um, as low as it is, I'm assuming probably eight, three to one. Um, but anyway, um, so if you wanted to upgrade that wrist pin, you'll see that there, there's an option to have more metal, uh, a thicker wrist pin. So, you know, obviously the thicker wrist pin, but you want to do that prior to balancing. You want to go ahead and make sure you get that thicker wrist pin before you take these to your machine shop and have them balanced. A lot of people won't tell you, um, you know, you don't just buy new pistons, new rods, take them out of the box, throw them in an engine. You know, you may see that, you know, the guys gap the rings and all this stuff. Um, but I still, I still go to my machinist and I take them all my parts 
And so you might have seen somebody in an engine build on their vlogs or whatever, and they won't have, and they will have, I'm sorry, they will have like a number one on this cylinder. And you're going to wonder why, why does, why does that guy have a number on there? Well, again, it's going to be a combination of your weights of your pistons and rods. You want everything within, I think a gram of each other or something that you, I forget the exact numbers my machinist can tell you. Um, but you want these all balanced as close as possible you don't want a real heavy piston versus one that's way lighter you know you want them all to be uh, uniform across the board as as close as you can possibly get um, you want that cylinder um, you want them all to be happy and all weighted the same you can balance the rotating assembly you can balance your crank you can balance your uh, we've even had our machinist balance the flywheel uh, with the piston and the rod um, as a complete rotating assembly um, so we we've definitely done that so we've actually took the flywheel to the machinist the pistons the rods uh, and the crank and had him balance them all together and and test fit everything before we do a build because we you know when we put a motor together we don't want to take it back apart until you know either we have some kind of failure um because most of the time, your your average street car, your average guy, isn't going to tear his motor down twice a year for rebuilds and re-rings and stuff like that. He's going to run it, and he's he's just going to maintenance it, and so you know change fluids, etc. Uh, maybe adjust the valves or something of that caliber once it gets broke in. But most of the time, when a guy's got a build, that's pretty much where he's at with it. It may get tuned from time to time. It may have, you know, some things that he'll do in between some routine maintenance stuff but very seldom does a man say hey you know i need to re-ring this engine let's tear it down this weekend and rebuild it because i don't have any plans most of the time when they one of these engines go together they stay that way and we want to keep them that way so we do go the extra mile on the front end um and we try to to spend a little extra money take a little more time at the machinist because if you do have a used part like this, you want to know that, that that's going to last. Um, I've ran um, three, four, five hundred horse builds with pistons that look extremely similar to this. Well, you get these guys, it's like, oh, that's junk, that's crap, that's whatever. Well, again, if I can take this to my machinist and we can deburr this on the sides and, and, and knock down any high spots and, and balance it. You know, get all four of these pistons relatively close within... You know what we're trying to shoot for less than a gram or so or whatever the, the exact numbers is um if we can get these and and make this you know as as close as as humanly possible and it being just as close as a brand new piston off the shelf why wouldn't you run a 150 dollar set of pistons versus 450 500 and then having to take it to the machinist and have it worked you know so you can use use stuff man you just you just gotta if they were any worse like if they were broke uh, along the side of the piston here or if there was damage on the ring lands you know these are the ring lands here if there was something that was substantial here um you know i wouldn't run these pistons if there was damage here you know inside this ring land if there was something that just stuck out or if they were crushed on the side uh any kind of major issues or the size were we're all jacked up or whatever everything looks to be in in decent shape um nothing seems you know these lips seem cracked or anything everything looks okay um but again i'll take on my machinist if it doesn't work out it was a gamble my loss but i'm out 150 bucks you know uh, but if it works i've saved you know three or four hundred dollars on, on the deal um so i do gamble like this sometimes but at the same time you know these are cap these are 500 horse pistons you know what i mean I, I can set this motor up we make 500 horse um out of a b16 if these pistons are thumbs up from the machinist man we got a 500 horse build on the way um so you know if you've dreamed of making a 500 horse honda build you got 150 bucks in your pistons and you're on your way you know and and with a guy that's just starting just getting into this and you know 150 you know so so let's say i traded into it for 50 bucks 
All right, I got 50 bucks and they exist here in my possession. All right, 50 bucks is a lot easier than 530 something dollars. All right, now if I go to my machine shop and he, he tests them out, cool, cool, cool. Everything looks good, does the work on them. And now I'm out another hundred bucks. I'm out 150 bucks. Or if I take them to him and he looks at him, he said, man, I just don't think those are salvageable. You're out 50 bucks as long as he hadn't worked on them. Um, and he may charge you a little fee to just see how, you know, how far off balance they are and all that. But you're still not out $500 and it becomes more affordable to build a 500 horse engine. So guys, just because it's skin up or a little beat up, do your homework. Again, if you have any questions, email me. Um, as long as these aren't holes and stuff like that, and we can deburr them and everything, I, I, I think this will be fine, man. I, I think this, these will be just fine. So, um, this goes to show you, it don't take tens of thousands of dollars to build motors. And, and again, there's things that you don't cheat on, and we'll get to that stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I think these are salvageable. I've been doing this long enough that I think these will be okay. Um, just do your homework, guys. There is parts out there that people's got laying piled up that if you can just find out they got them, get them priced right, you can save yourself some money on a build.